The big story, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced that the three farm bills will be repealed. This will be formalized as expected by cabinet later this week. What's the larger message out there now? And that's what is being talked about as well. As states like Punjab and the biggest of them all, Uttar Pradesh, go into election mode, will the Narendra Modi government press pause on the reform button? That and more is what we're going to be discussing now with uh, Swami Nathan Ayer. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us uh, live today. You've already written about how this is going to be read when it comes to hitting the pause button as far as the reform wave goes. Tell us more about it. Because this, can this have a cascading impact across uh, the entire economy? Yes. I mean, what the fact of the matter is that uh, while very many people are saying that, you know, the reforms might have been okay, but there was insufficient time, was rushed through, there wasn't enough time for debate and discussion. I think all this is completely false argument. The Supreme Court intervened and said, I'm staying here. We will have an expert committee. You could have had all the discussion. You could have had all the debate that you want with them. The farmers' organizations were very clear. We are not even going to talk. It was straightforward, you might say, jart tactics. Uh, straightforward, you know, we have the clout. We are going to use it. Now, they know that the world over, in democracies the world over, farm lobbies have similarly done similar things, paralyzed roads, paralyzed administration. And governments have surrendered in various other countries. And they have demonstrated that it can be done here too. So it had, you know, no matter how much discussion you had had, this was going to happen. The fact that they are not interested in things like discussion and debate is now clear that they are now saying, okay, even if Mr. Modi takes back all three laws, we will continue the agitation until there is a law enshrining minimum support prices. So, you know, there is going to be no end to this particular bully. What's, it's now been demonstrated that while Mr. Modi is called a strong man, he can be brought to heel by a sufficiently large demonstration. A few thousand people can hold the, the, this particular government to ransom. If that is the lesson that you get, it will be followed by every single other Western group too. For instance, right now, the government has a program of privatization. Excuse me, if you privatize, privatization has always been opposed by opposition parties and by the trade unions. The trade unions can put up as many thousands of people as these uh, farmers have done. In UP, in Uttar Pradesh, there was a proposal to privatize, for instance, electricity distribution. A uh, large number of expert committees, large number of government states, you know, they said, you know, the losses of the state electricity boards. Hundreds of thousands of crores. The only way to reform the system is you privatize them. The, when you attempted to do so in Uttar Pradesh last year, what happened? Immediately, the state electricity board employees say, we will go on indefinite strike. We will paralyze the state. It will have no electricity. And the state government retreated and said, okay, let us have a negotiation with you on improving performance. Nobody believes it will work. But the point is that the BJP has seen not only in this farm case, but in the UP electricity case, there was sufficiently large number of determined people say, we are just going to go on strike unless you roll back your privatization. It will happen. There is now, I mean, according to Mr. Modi's formal position, we are now going to go for privatization. Apart from a limited list of essential companies, all others will be privatized. Excuse me, if you have the kind of agitation that the farmers and the UP electricity people did. How will any of that work? Not only that, there has been this national monetization pipeline to raise six lakh crores by selling old assets like ports, railroads, this, that, and the other, and using that money for new infrastructure. Excellent idea, and this is supposed to uh, be the linchpin for the financing of huge number of new expressways, pipelines, uh, road networks, electricity networks, all India grid. I mean, excellent ideas. But where is that money going to come from if you cannot privatize and if you cannot have a monetization of the other old assets when people raise this? The fact is Mr. Modi has now been seen as weak. Mr. Modi has now been seen as somebody whose measures can be rolled back. Within the BJP, organizations like the Bharti Mazdur Sangh 
and the Swadeshi Jagrat Manch have always been anti-reform. Now, they were sidelined after the 2019 election. Mr. Modi came back in such smashing style that he could say, look, I'm sorry, you guys will now have to take a back seat. I must go ahead on these areas. Those two organizations will once again be enthused to say, oh, no, we will once again actively oppose all these reform measures from within the BJP. So as I said, by surrendering to the farmers, Mr. Modi has opened the door for similar agitations, similar protests, and similar sabotage and humiliations on all kinds of other reform fronts. This, to my mind, is the greatest picture. Right. And Swami, from a market messaging point of view as well, do you think the decision is significantly negative for India in that sense? Because like you're rightly saying, all and every reform is met with small agitations. But this gives the markets and more importantly, the FIF fraternity, the signaling that if protests were to continue for a longer time, they have the scope of getting repealed by the government because they want vote banks, which in your opinion uh, are not that significant, at least when it came to the farm laws. So in that sense, you know, this sort of gives the market a signaling or messaging that we could see a very haphazard way of reforms in the future. And in that sense, uh, the economy gets prone to cyclicality. You think the messaging for the markets is not going to go down well? Absolutely. Mr. Modi is not tailoring this decision to the market, of course. Mr. Modi has tailored this decision to the coming elections in Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, and three other states. Uh, this, that's important. You see, because these are the states, especially Punjab and UP, which have produced the bulk of farmers taking part in this agitation, the people who have gained most from minimum support prices and want the existing system to continue. There are farmers elsewhere. The Shetkari Sangatan in Maharashtra has been very much in favor of the reforms and against these Punjab farmers. Similarly, the Federation of uh, uh, Farm Associations, Andhra Pradesh, B. Chengal Reddy, they've also said, you know, we want the reforms. So it's not that all farmers want the reforms. It is the farmers in these states. And Mr. Modi says that, you know, rather than take the risk of losing these elections, well before the election itself, let me get this protest out of the way. Because while my image will be tarnished, while the stock market will be affected, while other problems will arise on other privatizations, it is right now on balance. He thinks it wiser to withdraw on this front at this point of time than risk a very, very humiliating defeat in the UP or the Punjab elections. But the consequence is very clear. All kinds of other people who are in opposing reforms will get great encouragement and will do their best to sabotage reforms. Not only, as I said, the various trade unions and so on outside, but even the trade unions and Swadeshi Chagran Manch inside the BJP will oppose it. Please remember that these people also had opposed the land acquisition law back in 2014 that Mr. Modi introduced and was forced to roll back when he found his own internal people are saying, this is terrible. You are giving this image that you only want to be for rich people and against poor farmers. And he withdrew the Land Acquisition Act at that time. He has done so now. So, you know, the fact is that Mr. Modi was not particularly looking to signaling to the stock market. He is looking to win the UP election. Is it possible that the whole thing will die down? It is possible. But the Congress, the, all the opposition parties will finance the farmers' agitations to try and continue. Right now, you see that they're trying to continue saying you must have a law on MSP. The fact is, even if Mr. Modi gives way and enacts a law on MSP, I suspect they will find some other reason to keep agitating till the election. So, I mean, politics is a very major part of this. It is not just the farmers and some reformers. This is very significantly about the UP and Punjab elections. Uh, and it has to be seen in that context. And it is disturbing, I'm sure, for anybody looking at the stock market to say, if this kind of constant sacrifice to populist agitations take place, what is the future of reforms and what is the consequences for India's economic growth? And I'm afraid the message is a negative one. It means that growth productivity are going to suffer. So this is a setback to the economy as well as to Mr. Modi.
Well, they do say, right, that all roads uh, to New Delhi do come from Lucknow. And uh, is that what we are seeing so far? The consensus seems to be one step forward, two step backwards. as the title, in fact, of a, a global brokerage report that's come in today from Bernstein, actually. Thank you so much for joining us uh, live today. Great to have you here with, the, with your views.